Cable and broadband giant Liberty Global making some waves and leadership changes as part of its broadband push. Joining us right now, of course, the company is also talking about the shares that lost about 10 percent just over the last year. It's having a little bit of a rough start to the year so far. For more on uh, those growth plans, we're joined right now by Mike Fries. He is the CEO and vice chairman of Liberty Global. And, uh, Mike, it's great to see you. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a little bit about what some of the big issues facing the <coughs> cable industry are right now. You're seeing it across the board when it comes to cable cutting. You know, right, uh, Comcast cutting. just uh, announced this morning some of the issues they've had with video. And while they are adding in broadband, we, we have seen video subscribers drop. What, what do you say? You listen, there's pros and cons in that. Um, we've always been a video aggregator, if you think about it, going way back, where there was cable channels or satellite channels and today I think the industry is moving very efficiently into OTT apps so if you think about our business we're just now aggregating Netflix and Amazon Prime and, and YouTube and consumers are happy about that we're not losing as many customers in Europe the streaming wars have come but they're not as, as viral or, or problematic uh, but the other point I'd make is that broadband is the killer app for us and if you think of companies like Charter for example they're not giving up on the video business but they're pointing to 99 percent gross margins in broadband right. and declining gross margins in video and saying that we're still at a pretty healthy company but and that's the way we look at it as isn't well. the transition though there's there is a transition cost to you right yeah right sure. it, it may be it may be fabulous if it, you're just running broadband if you yeah. can ever get to that place Listen, but the but, but all the infrastructure and everything else that has to come with Correct. On the other side, as that, as, as that business diminishes. We're losing, you know, in the Europe, maybe 1% to 2% of our customers a year. I think in the U.S. it's 4 to 5% right. if you include satellite. So we're, you know, our, we're declining more slowly, but there are certainly frictional costs in that. Uh, it's a revenue stream we want to protect, and the way we're protecting it is doing the same thing Comcast is doing, launching a really advanced version of our box that you can speak into and go to Netflix and go to Amazon or go to BBC or wherever you want to go. Uh, and consumers actually in Europe don't want to work that hard. 80% of them still lean back. I don't back. want to work that hard. I want it all put in one place. 80% still lean back and watch the big screen. Yeah. So there's a chance for us to be an aggregator, a meta aggregator of content. Um, if you're innovative and spending the money the way we are, we use the same platform as Comcast, RDK, what it's called. And uh, so we think we're in a good place, but, but you're right. There's friction there. And so you lean into broadband. In our case, we're leaning into fixed mobile convergence. So Europe, fixed mobile convergence is here to stay. 100 billion in mergers in the last three or four years. We've been part of those. Um, you know, 5G and 1 gig is a killer combination. That's the dream team. And so if we have both mobile and fixed assets, which we will in Europe and have already in many markets, um, that's a long-term plan. And connectivity is really where it's at. For you're, us. you're a little skeptical, though, just about 5G getting here as quickly as some people say. I think it's happening, but I don't know that everybody's happy. Operators aren't happy because it's expensive. Spectrum is expensive. The rollout is expensive. And I'm not sure there's a business case yet. 4G in Europe is still a very fast, great product. Uh, it works well here in Davos. Nobody's complaining about speeds. So it's going to happen, and, you know, we're behind it. It'll never replace fixed, in my mind, uh, because the average mobile operator, uh, mobile customer consumes maybe 5 or 10 gigabytes a month, but 200 to 300 speak, gigabytes on But fixed. speak to that. If you get, what about I mean, this idea of fixed line wireless 5G? Yeah, I think it's a marginal product. Um, it might be working well in rural areas where you can't get fiber or cable, um, but fixed wireless is not a great technology. I don't think anybody... Even Verizon, I don't think, is that serious about it as a replacement product. Europe, not really this, that much as well. By the way, AT&T, though, is praying and hoping that it is. Well, they don't want to spend on fiber, right? We're heavy into fixed. We're building the 10-gig network. You know, we'll be, we'll be 10 uh, gigs probably in the next seven to eight years. Every 10 years, we go up tenfold. When I was on stage here 10 years ago, I was bragging about 100 meg. And you were like, really, 100 meg? Is that for real? <laughs> and now we're one gig. So it's going nowhere but up. And that's, um, you need to have a wire. You need fiber to get that done. You've got, um, what, about $10 billion on hand that you yeah. can put to play if you are yeah. interested in buying anybody? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, last year we bought about $3.2 billion worth of our stock. Mm -hmm. We did a tender offer at 27 The stock's at 20 so I'm not feeling very good about that. We think it's worth 27 <laughs> but we've had some issues, obviously, with our investors, which we are addressing. Everybody wants to know what we're going to do with it. We're going to be patient, I think, make smart moves, uh, look at buying back stock. Uh, Europe... There's, you know, it's not like it was 10 years ago. It's not that uh, rush for consolidation anymore. So we want to look for the right transactions. Right. Um, what, 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 uh, just with the stock drop, what do investors not see? What do you, what do you think? Why I is think it's it all about the U.K. You can buy our stock today. You get Virgin Media for free, for free. And this is a company that's doing $3 billion of EBITDA, levered five times. Um, and there are concerns. The U.K. market is very competitive. Uh, the, there was a whole Brexit issue that I think was behind us. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got some headwinds on the regulatory front there that are not great. But fundamentally, it's about just driving free cash flow, and that is going up and operating free cash flow. 
So we feel good about the UK market and we have great strategic options there. I mean, our network reaches half of the UK. Boris Johnson wants one gig in front of everybody by 2025. We're there in 12 months for half the country because we're, you know, we have such a robust network. For us, there's lots of optionality in that market. Because we're going to be talking to Brian Roberts in just a little bit, what do you make of Sky and, and their competitive Sky's position? a great company. Um, you know, they're, they're effective in broadband. They're effective in content and video. Um, you know, we're partners with them. We carry their content. We pay them a lot every year for that. Uh, so I think they've done a nice job. You know, Jeremy and Stephen are great operators. Um, I'll be there tomorrow meeting with them. I think there's, that we're all kind of uh, figuring out what the future looks like in the UK. And it's sort of musical chairs. And we're kind of figuring out when's the music going to stop and who's standing. To the extent that either you're an interesting proxy or at least have your pulse on it, we are often talking about Netflix constantly. Right. And they now talk about how 90% of their growth has to come internationally. Yeah. So it's, it basically has to come to your customers. Yeah, I think What do you think the, the uptake is really, is, is really going to be for them? It varies. But remember, they're global. So f a, a small number multiplied by a big number is a big number. Mm. So if he gets 5% across the planet, that's a big number. I, he's, you know, as high as 30 or 40% in some of our markets, as low as 5 or 10 in others. Mm. So it's a market-based uh, situation, and I think it's a great product. We're, we love carrying it. We love distributing it to consumers on our box. Um, he's going to have some challenges with Disney Plus and Peacock and others getting into the game and holding back content. But Netflix, he's very specific about his strategy. You know, he's not going into sports. He's not doing advertising. He's spending $15 billion a year on original content. And that, you know, that'll work for a period of time, I think. So it's a, it's a great business. You feel better? I'm feeling really good right you now. You own the stock? I'm feeling Not that. Better. You have had me petrified that it's going to be a 5G world and there'll be no, nobody will use any fixed lines and Comcast can be out of business. You, you had all these. You know. Now I hear the truth. Yeah. He's not going hold to on, hold on. Two years. If you and, swapped well, him out with Randall Stevenson, he would tell you the, the, the opposite yeah, story. Is it going to be 5G? 70% of the time you're on your phone, you're on a fixed network. When you're home, oh, you're on your so Wi-Fi. When you're in the Whoa. work, when you're at work, you're on your. You're probably better? on Wi-Fi now, right? You know who's coming on next? Do you want to Look, talk as him a, out of fixed line? As a <laughs> as a as a proud <laughs> employee of Comcast. Well, I hope you feel better. I feel been very good. Me, you've been making me worry. <laughs> so you have your, some of your friends come on here and scare, and, and scare us. <laughs> Mike, thank you for joining great us. Great to be here. Really Thanks, great guys. to see you. Good to see you. Good to see Take you. Care. Too.